Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is called Using Sampling to Predict. We first have some vocabulary we need to establish, and the first is sample. Now, a sample is a subgroup or subset of the population that is used to represent the whole population. Well, next, what is the population? It is the larger group being studied in a survey that is used in statistical analysis. Now, when we do surveys and use samples of a population, we have to ask ourselves what is an unbiased sample versus what is a biased sample. Well, an unbiased sample is selected at random and is representative of the larger population. then we have our biased samples. Basically, a biased sample is a, means the sample is not representative of the population. And typically, it favors certain parts of the population over others. And so then we have our concept summary boxes of types of unbiased samples compared to types of biased samples. And let's run through these real quick. Now, in our unbiased samples, remember those are the ones that are selected at random and are representative of a larger population, the ones we're trying to look for here. A simple random sample. Each item or person in a population is as likely to be chosen as any other. An example, 30 student ID numbers are randomly selected by a computer. It seems pretty random and pretty simple. Now, let's compare that to a stratified random sample. The population is divided into similar non-overlapping groups. A simple random sample is then selected from each group. So a population of election districts can be separated into urban, suburban, and rural strata. Or you could picture a school being separated into separate grades. And then each grade gets just a, ran a simple random sample from there. Lastly, we have the systematic random sample. The items or people are selected according to a specific time or t uh, item interval. So every 20 minutes a customer is chosen or every 10th customer in line is chosen as a part of the sample. That's again random but also systematic that you have a set way of choosing the person. Now, biased samples, reasons that a sample might be biased include a convenient sample. It includes members of the population that are easily accessed or accessed, such as the first 10 students in the cafeteria line. I mean, if you're going to, say, ask a class, do you like the cafeteria food? And you only ask the first 10 people in line, 
that's not at random. That's not a good sample. It's just easy, which is why it's convenience. The other type to bias sample is voluntary response sample. These involve only those who want to or can participate in the sampling. An example of this, the principal sent an email to graduating seniors asking them where to hold commencement. Seniors are asked to vote through an online poll, and that sounds nice. It sounds like you're opening it up to everybody, but in reality, it's only going out to those who are going to respond. It's not truly random, necessarily, who does end up responding. So just opening it up to everybody and seeing who responds does not necessarily mean it's going to be unbiased. So let's look at our first example today. A hardware store wants feedback on its products and services. The store includes a telephone number on each receipt so customers can call and participate in a survey. Identify the type of sample as biased or unbiased and describe its type, again using our key concept boxes. Explain your reasoning. Well, putting a phone number on the receipt so customers can call and participate, that's not random. That's very, in fact, biased. So this is a biased sample. And the type of biased sample it is, if you compare either convenience sample or voluntary response sample, this would be voluntary response sample. And our explanation for this, it includes only those customers who choose to call and participate. As strange as this may seem, some people may not be able to call and participate. They may be able to go to the store, but won't, because of time or money, just call a phone number to participate in a survey. So it's actually going to be a biased sample that you get back, simply because it's just simply voluntary response. Mr. Stevens surveyed every 10th student in the hallway to see where they would prefer to go on a vacation. 48% preferred the beach, 36% preferred an amusement park, and 16% preferred the mountains. Is this sampling method valid? Basically, is it unbiased? If so, how many of the 560 students in the school would you expect to say they preferred the beach and explain? Well, he is picking every 10th student in the hallway. And that, in fact, is unbiased, so we are good. So yes, this is unbiased. And when you look at the different types of unbiased samples, we have simple random, stratified random, and systematic random. And this fits the definition of systematic random sample. as Mr. Stevens has a set plan for who he's going to ask. Now, the second part of the question. How many of the 560 students in the school would you expect to say they preferred the beach? Well, we have the beach here, and we're going to look for the 48% preferred the beach in our question. And so, a couple different ways to solve this. I'm going to use a proportion. We can say, all right, 48 out of the 100% that were surveyed is going to equal, I don't know how many, so that's going to be x, over the 560 students. And now I can cross multiply in order to solve this. 48 multiplied by 560 is going to equal 100 times x. 48 multiplied by 560 is 26,880 
equals 100 x and when I divide by the 100 on both sides the result is Two hundred sixty-eight and eight tenths equals x. Well, we're not going to have eight tenths of a student, so we might as well round this up to two hundred sixty-nine students. Now, another way to solve this type of question is by saying, "All right, we had forty-eight percent that said they preferred the beach. So, what is forty-eight percent of five hundred?" 60. Well, you could take 0.48 or 48 hundredths and multiply it by 560. It's another way to solve this question. And it's another way to have a result of 268 and 8 tenths, which still gets us down to 269 students. A middle school planned to play music during lunch. To determine what type of music students preferred, 25 students with MP3 players in one lunch period were surveyed and asked what type of music they preferred. 16 said they preferred country music. Is this sampling method valid? If so, find how many of the 535 students in school you can expect to prefer country music. Explain. Well, when we look at the sample... 25 students with MP3 players in one lunch period were surveyed. Well, that seems awfully convenient to me. It doesn't seem very random. So I would call this a biased sample. And the type of biased sample that this is, is called a convenience sample. And our explanation can be only students with MP3 players in one lunch period were surveyed. When you think back to Mr. Stevens and the way he surveyed the class about vacations, picking 10 people at random. I mean, that would be a much better way of going about things. Now, if we were to kind of step aside and pretend that this were an unbiased sample, I would like to show you how to calculate how many of the 535 students would prefer country music. What you can do is take the 16 that preferred it in the sample, place it in a proportion over 25, and set that equal to the part of the whole 535 students. Remember, kind of part over a whole, or is over of uh, type of idea here. So we have the 16 is the part of the 25 that were surveyed. is going to equal the part x out of the whole 535. You can set up cross multiplication to solve this type of problem. And so that 25 times x is going to equal 16 times 535. So 25x equals 8,560. Divide by 25 on both sides. And x is going to equal 300. 42 and 4 tenths, which is about 342 students. Now again, this is a biased sample, so you did not have to go and solve this question since it was biased, but if it were unbiased, this is how you would do it. That's it for this lesson on using sampling to predict. Good luck.